John Jones and first round management have finally come to a split after 11 years. Per a statement released on first round management Twitter, reads after an 11 year journey as Johnny Bones Jones management team, first round management and Bones have amicably decided to part ways. We are proud of him and the work we've done. We wish him the best going forward. This comes on the heels of some dispute about the UFC and John Jones coming to terms for a potential Francis Ngannou fight. Um, there's been some back and forth publicly on Twitter, John Jones, and saying that, you know, $30 million, Dana White, who, where did you hear this number from? Was somebody negotiating on my behalf? So, sort of this thing. So we've had a lot of, um, I guess, murkiness when it comes to John Jones figuring out the path going forward. So, and tell me what you make of this announcement today of him leaving his longtime management team. Um, I'm, I'm just as surprised as I'm not surprised. There, there have seemed to have been a few uh, roadblocks as far as smooth sailing and managing John Jones. And he's repeatedly cried foul about uh, his pay. And obviously that's something that management would be um, helping him out with in negotiations. There was an obvious conflict of interest with Derek Lewis, who's also uh, a client of first round management, being the, the guy who supposedly now is getting the, the, the title shot against Francis Ngannou. So I, I, I'm shocked it's happening now in, in a way, but we also should have seen this coming. Yeah, we sh we sh probably should have because this isn't the first time that John has complained about money, right? Um, so I don't want to you know speak like I know about what the scene what it, what it's been like behind the scenes, but these are just public statements that we have, and it kind of raises the question, you know, how good was the relationship? Again, I don't want to speculate too much, but. At the end of the day, you walk away from a, a long term relationship like this um, in MMA. It's not all that common in other sports. We kind of see it happen from time to time, especially like in baseball. We see guys switch switch agents all the time. Um, you know, basketball, it happens more frequently as well. But in MMA, generally, we see we see guys stick, especially when they're already at the championship level. The caliber is of like a, a John Jones, right? They're at the top of the game. And first round management has quite the team, quite the lineup. If you go to their website right now, I mean, just look at the names. You got Mighty Mouse Johnson, Masvidal, Yoel Romero's, Pettis's, Woodley's, Derek Lewis, like you mentioned, top names throughout. So these guys have quite the client list that um, a respectable client list. And a lot of these guys, we really don't hear too many complaints from when it comes to working with first round management and the Kawa brothers. Although, you know, social media wise, the Kawa brothers way <laughs> raise their own, uh, I guess, uh, controversies from time to time. Uh, but what is this, how does this reflect on first round management? To lose a client like John Jones, the GOAT, light heavyweight division, arguably the, the greatest of all time uh, in a lot of people's minds, to lose a client like this, how does this reflect on the management team as a whole? I think it reflects very poorly on them, um, you know, and, and maybe that's just because we are within the MMA bubble and we've seen a lot of the interactions that they have had um, with with um, the people outside of their immediate circle. Also, the frequent complaints about Jones when it comes to fighter pay. It's just and and, and I think I, I think this this Derek Lewis thing, too, is particularly uh, damning for them. Um, now, obviously, there's a conflict of interest there. We see this in mixed martial arts all the time. Like one particular agent or agency has control over a lot of fighters who are in the same division. Um, we've seen like, for instance, we've seen Ali Abdelaziz have two of his clients fight each other for a title and whatnot. And, and, mm -hmm. and obviously that can create some sort of some sort of question marks as to how each athlete is being represented when it comes time to negotiate. But when you have um, Derek Lewis going on Twitter to, to say, Hey, I'll take this fight for cheaper. Now, Derek Lewis is a jokester. He's a guy who does say a lot of things for comedic effect. And I'm, I'm sure there is at least some of that said in jest, but it's just not a good look to have your stable mate, say that yeah i'll take this fight cheaper and and pretty much undercut um the the company that's and and that's 
you know, assuming that they were doing a good job negotiating for him in the first place. I can recall a time in the not too distant past when one of the cow was was having a a very bitter exchange via Twitter with a, a fellow media member, a uh, gentleman that, that we both um, work with quite often uh, and, and quite friendly with. And he was insisting that Jones was being paid fairly. And this was in yes. juxtaposition to the guaranteed paydays for Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury in their first fight, which sold quite a bit under what I believe, I believe less than half, half or less than half of what uh, Jones is um, headlining at 232, UFC 232 sold. And, and and the the idea that he was being paid fairly when you see uh, the sister sport, uh, boxing, having a less successful pay-per-view, but the fighters are guaranteed exponentially more. If that is the mentality that's going into the negotiating table and your client is simultaneously complaining about money and the other client that you have is saying, I'll take this fight for cheaper, something is really, really wrong with that picture. And it all had to come to a head at some point. And uh, looks like looks like this coincides very well with uh, Dana White at the post fight presser uh, over the over the past weekend, confirming that Derek Lewis is the person that will be getting the title shot against Francis Ngannou. Yeah, and to be clear, like apparently John, at least publicly, is not taking this too hard or like in a he's not showing any negative negativity towards this announcement. Uh, he posted his own Instagram uh, post earlier. And it reads, it's been an amazing, absolutely amazing journey. Thank you so much for all the memories and the business ventures. Wishing the Kawa family and everyone over at First Round Management many blessings moving forward. Glad to be able to call you guys friends for life. So it seems like, you know, like the First Round Management statement says, an amicable split. So, I mean, you got to think, you know, leaving on good terms is good and all that. But to your point about the fighter pay when it comes to, you know, paying guys like John Jones properly. It's not exactly not exactly a thing that I could agree with saying that John Jones compensated properly for everything that he was done for the UFC throughout his career, the level of fighter that he is. I mean, listen, we have guys we have guys like Jake Paul calling Dana White out about fighter pay, right? And, and being others. right. And, and being, being correct. Absolutely 100% correct. You like know, Jake Paul the, being the voice of reason. How scary is that? What is that? What's the uh, what's the meme? The worst person you know just made a great point, or something yeah, well, like that. Even yeah. a broken clock is is right twice yeah. a day. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so I mean, there's definitely some there's some truth to obviously the uh, the fact that John was not getting compensated properly. So you know, you look for different avenues to go, but he did have successes, like he kind of mentions in his statement. Um, I believe I forget which year the the Nike deal came about, and obviously he fumbled the bag on that for outside of the cage inner inner you know mishaps. Reebok as well, yeah. So I mean, listen, like obviously they were on board. Uh, John Jones joined first round management sometime after or right before around around the time of the Matt Hamill quote unquote loss, right when he was already in, in Jack, with Jackson Wink at that time. So a lot of good business ventures did come out of that deal, but transgressions outside of the cage also caused, you know, issues with the bag. I mean, imagine if none of that stuff happened, where would John Jones be market marketability wise right now? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's um, one of the biggest what ifs and yeah. not just, not just in mixed martial arts and sports history, you know, what if Jones didn't screw up uh at the times that he did or or as much as he did or as hard as he did um de definitely leaves a, he's definitely left a lot of money on the table I, I i think it's possible that this that this split is not necessarily not necessarily amicable um but not hostile i i think there is there there should be I, i'd imagine there's uh, some level of genuine uh friendship between uh jones his family and and the Kawa family it 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 seems right i mean you think about how old he was when he first signed on the dotted line with them how much his life has changed since then how much he's been through how many like 
personal crisis this man has has endured exactly. you know and not and not just the the hit and run when i like his his mom passed away uh 2016 i believe 2016 2017 um you, you know the, the the family issues and it, all all sorts of things that have happened in his personal life and things that we are, we're not privy to as well. Mm -hmm. And to have them by your side. Yes, there there should be some level of, of camaraderie there. I, I and I would I would say that this split probably was some level of contention in it and some level of. um uh, malice is the wrong word. Like just, just not necessarily, <laughs> not necessarily a, a positive feeling walking out of the out of the door. But at the end of the day, separating the friendship from business. I, I think sure. that's that's probably what happened. So I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say this everything is all hunky dory as far as um, the the fighter management relationship. Clearly, but eh, they, I'm sure they'll have dinner and drinks together. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I it would be hard to imagine a scenario in which. Like you said, you go through so many life experiences together. John's family growing. Um, I'm sure him helping. Obviously, the Malky brothers' family grows as well in their in their own ways. Um, so yeah, you have a whole bunch of experience over the past 11 years together as friends and business partners. Yeah, there's going to be a lot to share there that you can always lean on instead of just focusing solely on business. All right? Like you said, we 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 can still sit at the table and break bread, um, but. At this point in my career, I'm going to go in a different direction business wise. I think that's fair. That's fair to say. Now that raises the question. And I think the most important one is what does John do going forward for representation? There's been the question of does he represent himself, which for a guy of his stature, I don't know if that's necessarily the best best route to go. But obviously the names that are getting thrown around dominance MMA with Ali Abdelaziz. You got paradigm out there with Adi Attar, which there's there's more as well. Which one do you think we will see John Jones end up with? I, you know, I don't. If if the the friendship between the the Kawas and Jones is what it is, um, what they say it is, or what we suspect it, it should be, at least with all all this time together, I strongly doubt he ends up with Ali Abdelaziz at dominance. I, I strongly doubt that. I mean, that would be that would be the ultimate slap in the face right there. No, no pun intended um, to have uh, to have like the arch rival um, management agencies, you know, just taking the the top tier client away from one another like that. That just seems a, a little bit too extreme. Um, I, I'm paradigm doesn't sound too crazy to me, um, but I'm I think we're going to see a wild card. Um I remember uh, maybe a couple of years ago or so Floyd Mayweather was really doing his best to court John Jones and he wanted him wearing a TMT hat. I think this, this blend makes a lot of sense to me. If Jones is trying to get paid properly, uh, what better person to represent you? What better team than that of Floyd Mayweather, who is, financially the most successful combat sport athlete in history um i i think that is the right move i like it I'll, I'll throw you one more wild card before we get out of here what about something that we really haven't seen in mma all, all that much i don't think if at all really what if what if rock nation steps comes comes in the building see that's that would be fantastic see and that and that's the level that jones should be aiming for right now that that's really where he should be setting his sights if you ran into problems with a, a largely mma focused agency and i know first round has athletes of of other sports but we know them mainly for the mma athletes that, that they represent if you go to a dominance if you go to a paradigm and their their top clients are a uh habib Nurm Nurmagomedov and um and a conor mcgregor you're still in that mma bubble you're still you're still limiting yourself in a way you know no disrespect to those agencies because they they obviously do uh, a decent job with the people that they have but if you're talking about a rock nation you're talking about a, a tmt you're you're talking about uh agencies that touch outside of just the ufc and bellator um they're they're talking numbers that 
mixed martial arts typically doesn't see. And, and that's sort of the thing needed to shake things up. And quite frankly, Jones is that caliber of athlete. There's a reason why Nike was interested in him. And they pretty much shunned the rest of the mixed martial arts world, um, with the exception of Brazil, of course. Like, there's a reason why they they aligned themselves with him initially. And there's a reason why Reebok showed interest in Jones um, before they end up dropping him because of his out of the cage issues. There's a reason why these blue chip companies look to a, a John Jones. Um, same reason why they look toward a George St. Pierre, because you're talking about generational level talent and Jones belongs at a place that that fits uh, the the scope of athlete is like how how large of a of an athlete he is and, and what the importance is um, for him and his brand to the sport. Yeah, couldn't agree more, man. There's, there's a lot to look forward to with this announcement and what it means for his career going forward. Let us know in the comments below what you think, uh, what you think about the announcement for one and which team do you see John Jones joining? whether it be any of the teams we mentioned or another manager or management group that we have not mentioned. There's plenty of them out there, uh, but we, we kind of touched on the biggest ones there. So please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And uh, to steal a line from Ant Walk over there, tell a friend to tell that friend and tell that friend and tell 10 more friends or something like that. I think I may have gotten it right. Whatever, you know what it Close is. Close enough. It's the body lock. Catch you next time.